noon setting of the Office of Daily Prayer, Lutheran Service Book, page 296. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my prayer. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. You will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Continue with Psalm 117 at the beginning of the hymn. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In case you were wondering, yes, that is the shortest psalm, and also the uh, shortest chapter in Scripture, being only two verses. Oh. Our main text for today is Revelation chapter 4, the entire chapter. After this I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven, and the first voice that I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up here, and I will show you things that must be fulfilled hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a seat was put in heaven, and one sat on the seat, and he that sat was to look upon a like a jasper stone and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow about the seat, in sight like an emerald, and around the seat were twenty-four seats, and upon the seats twenty-four elders, sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the seat proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the seat, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the seat there was a sea of glass, like a crystal, and in the midst of the seat, and round about the seat, were four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. And the first creature was like a lion, the second creature like a calf, and the third creature had a face as of a man, and the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. And the four creatures had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they had no rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And when those creatures gave glory and honor and thanks to him who sat on the seat who lives forever and ever, the twenty-four elders fell down before him who sat on the throne and worshipped him who lives forever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you have created all things, and for your will's sake they exist and were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You might have guessed from listening through this that Revelation is a very symbolic and visual book. So, when John is having this vision of heaven, uh, when he's uh, being, he, he's looking through the door into heaven, he's seeing all these things, and uh, let me tell you, the grammar of the book of Revelation breaks down a little bit. Uh, John, in his writings, uh, his gospel and his epistles, he's usually fairly careful, but in the book of Revelation, um, you can see that he's <laughs> hurriedly trying to write down and understand what's going on as fast as he possibly can, and he's not, <laughs> he's not as careful as he usually is. When he's seeing all these wondrous things and trying to get all the details he can, it's uh, overwhelming in a, in a big way. And uh, we do know that this is fairly symbolic because it's, 
matching a whole bunch of other symbols and images used throughout scripture. Uh, even the speeches of various people that uh, John sees in heaven, uh, they're uh, mapped around certain numbers. So uh, numbers and symbols come up all the time in Revelation. So uh, when the 24 elders at the, at the end of the fourth chapter here are saying, you are worthy, Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you have created all things, and for your will's sake they exist and were created. So, number three. Uh, at, at the beginning, uh, describing the seat, there were seven lamps of fire burning before the seat, which are the seven spirits of God. So the Holy Spirit representing seven. So we have three and seven. Uh, three being the number of God, uh, which comes up even in the Old Testament. Uh, we understand this better in terms of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And uh, seven is also the number of perfection, the number of completion, the, the number to which things are purposed. Um, seven comes up in creation, because you have the seven days of creation and everything was made uh, very good, and God rested on the seventh day because, to make all things complete. As we'll go through, we'll find a whole bunch of different numbers. Uh, three and seven come up when we're referencing uh, uh, God especially, and God uh, performing actions. Uh, number four comes up when we're looking at, at God's creation. Uh, four is especially characteristic of the earth, because there's four cardinal directions. So when we see on the number four, we can think of creation. So uh, when we have the four living creatures, like a, la a lion, a calf, a man, and a flying eagle, uh, that's part of God's creation, so the, the creation is worshipping God around him. Now, I kind of want to explain, uh, with all these numbers and symbols and stuff, can we possibly understand what's going on? Not absolutely. We don't absolutely know what's going on in, in all the corresponding uh, uh, reference for all the symbols and numbers and everything. However, uh, this is revelation. This is revealed to us so that we might better understand what is going on. Uh, and I don't think there is a better example than the four living creatures here that kind of exemplifies that. So when you have the four living creatures who are covered in eyes, each with six wings, and they're uh, flying around and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Um, this is a clear reference to Isaiah chapter 6, where Isaiah comes before God's throne in heaven, and he sees the seraphim, the uh, burning angels, the ones who are flying around the throne of God, saying forever and ever, Your Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. Uh, they don't say who is and so uh, they don't say who was and is and is to come, but in in, in Isaiah, but Isaiah is still uh, witnessing these seraphim saying these things. Now Isaiah witnesses the seraphim having six wings, and with two wings they cover their faces, with two they cover their feet, and with two they fly about. Um, in many depictions in medieval artwork, you see the seraphim covering the upper half of the body and the lower half of the body, rather than just the feet and the face. Now, when John is witnessing these angels, uh, they're either seraphim or uh, cherubim. I'm more inclined to say they're seraphim because of the correlation with Isaiah chapter 6. But uh, John is saying that they're flying around with their six wings, and he can clearly see them. He's not seeing them covering their faces or covering their feet. And the difference is largely uh, the status of John in Revelation versus Isaiah in, in uh, Isaiah chapter 6. Because when Isaiah is confronted by all, these, uh, all the beauty of heaven, uh, his first instinct is not to marvel at all of this and go, oh, this is a wondrous creation of God to the, 
and to his glory, and we should all be worshipping and happy and everything. That's not Isaiah's uh, first inclination. Isaiah's first inclination is to say, Woe is me! I'm a sinner! I'm a person of unclean lips, and I've come from a people of unclean lips. Uh, Isaiah is saying that he's, he's confronted by this holiness, and because he's confronted by holiness, it makes his sin and the sin of his people that much more evident to him. However, John gets to see all of this, and he gets to see it all revealed. Isaiah, it is still somewhat concealed, even though he gets to see into heaven. Uh, Isaiah will, will also say that he can't see the one who is seated on the throne because God's raiment covers the whole, whole place. Uh, he was also saying that it's hard to see in there because the smoke of the altar is blocking his view. But John gets to see everything clearly. So what's the difference between Isaiah and John? Uh, when this comes about. The difference is Isaiah still needs to have a burning coal from the altar in heaven placed upon his lips so that he can be freed from sin. John, uh, who sees everything right away in the book of Revelation, has already been cleansed of sin by Jesus Christ. So by virtue of Jesus Christ, who uh, appeared to John in a few chapters earlier in Revelation, uh, because John has already been cleansed of sin, he might see things without restrictions. It's all terribly confusing and symbolic, and <laughs> so John, in his humanity, cannot comprehend the things of God, but the things of God are still revealed to him. So we are more in the state of John as Christians than we are in the state of Isaiah. Things have been revealed to us, and we can say definite things about God, because God has cleansed us from our sin, and we can come before him. And when we enter into his kingdom in heaven, uh, when our soul departs from this body and comes before his throne, uh, before the resurrection, we get to see the one who is seated on the throne. We get to experience all of this because it is God who cleanses us from our sin so that we may be able to do this. Amen. We continue with the Curie on page 296. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. We us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord God, you revealed to both Isaiah and to John the glories of your heaven. However, to Isaiah, who was of unclean lips and a person of unclean lips, things were concealed. Yet to John, who was cleansed by the holy and innocent blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, he was able to see all things. O Lord God, help us in faith to be cleansed from our sin. Uh, forgive us uh, through, your, through your grace. Come to us through your word and sacrament that we may be healed and brought together with to you, reconciled to our Father in heaven, that we may see his eternal glories forever and ever. In your name we pray, O Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Lord God, you are seated on the throne in heaven, and before you all angels do pray and glorify your name. For all of us who have lost people, uh, who have uh, had people in our lives who have died, we thank you for the lives that you, for their lives that you have given to us, that you have uh, created them and caused them to share their lives with us. We pray that you guide us to your presence in heaven, that we may see them 
uh, yet again in your kingdom to come. Lord, in your mercy we pray. Amen. O Holy Spirit, you have guided John into the presence of heaven and revealed to him all that uh, all that we see in, in the book of Revelation. Uh, please be with us and also uh, guide us so that we do not look solely upon the things of this world, but may be guided by your scriptures so that we may have a peer to, that we may peer into heaven just the slightest bit, both uh, through studying the word and through our worship using uh, that is directed by the word of God and, his, and uh, the sacraments of our Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for all of this. Amen. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, at this hour you run upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms to embrace the world in your head. Grant that all people of the earth may look to you and see their salvation. For your mercy's sake we pray. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.